Well, welcome in the precious name of Jesus. I'm glad you've joined me today. This is a really good word. You know, I'm personally having to live this out, so I understand. I appreciate it. And I just, this word blessed me. It really encouraged me, so I know it will do great things for you. But before I go to it, I want to share some things, some updates. You know, we've been working on our new website for quite some time. And oh, glory to God, it was truly a hard place. We, we began working on it and it crashed. We spent a whole lot of money, did some more work on it, it crashed. And finally, I'm like, Lord, what do I do? And I just had to humble myself and really, a lot of what I'm learning today, you know, live this thing out. Uh, and so we sat down, did what we're doing, what we we're going to talk about today, stood on the word, counted it all joy, and we began to rebuild it. And I'm glad to say it really is coming along. It's going to be a phenomenal website. And you can actually go there and get the notes from today's message. And we're going to start adding more and more notes uh, so that you can really go and get this revelation for yourself. Um, get the verses and everything else that I used. Amen. And in addition, you're going to find a wealth of material. It's not all there yet. We're slowly adding. It takes a lot of time. We've got hundreds of videos to put up there, notes and etc. So it's a lot, a lot of work. Uh, but it's going to be a great resource to help people in this hour. Discover, you know, regarding the stories and of the heroes of faith, what they did right, what they did wrong, the revivals of the past, so that we can learn, so that we can be catapulted into our divine purpose in this hour. We need um, pastors to go out and pioneer churches in America, in Europe, today. This is the missions field. And I really believe that we need to equip people worldwide um, to understand how did these great men and women of the past do it? How did they get such great results? And I'm spending a lot of time researching, uh, and it's, it's, it's expensive, it, it's time consuming in many ways. All of our videos are properly licensed and you know there's a lot of time and research that goes into it. And so I pray that it's a real wealth of material to bless you, to bless your churches, and to provoke you to live boldly for Jesus in this hour. I also want to thank those that have already begun to partner with us, um, even if it's just um, to partner in prayer, because we need that. We need a door of, or of utterance opened. It's so important that we're standing together in prayer. And I also appreciate those that have decided to stand with us as financial partners. Oh, glory to God. If I could just share with you how much we appreciate it, because there's so much we're trying to do, and it costs a lot of money. The website, the videos, there's a lot of time, money invested in it. And we want to go further. There's so many things on our heart to do, uh, to go even further with this, to travel, to take this message to churches, to write a book. We have several books in our heart that we're praying right now through, um, that see them birthed on the earth. And all this is going to take finances. And so I greatly appreciate those that have stepped to the plate. And I'm, I'm asking anybody that God puts in your heart, whether it's a one-off offering or if you want to give uh, on a monthly or regular basis. Everything, I just greatly appreciate it. We pray over it and we just are so grateful for every seed sown. It truly makes a difference. And I just wanted to take a moment to truly thank you for it. Um, you bless me so much. And I pray a powerful return. And I pray that as you watch the videos, you see what you're sowing into. And as I said, you look at the website and you're going to see more stuff coming and you're going to see, the, for example, the Ignite mentoring classes. There's a lot of work put in that to help mentor believers. Amen? So thank you. Your, your prayer and your financial support truly makes a difference. So thank you. <clears throat> so let's get into the Word. Father, we just come before you in the name of Jesus. We just want to hear from heaven. We want to lift you up, Jesus. We want to shout your praises. Father, hallowed be your name. We just want so much to lift up your name. We want so much to glorify you, to bless you, to praise you. We come as your children and, and as sons and daughters, Father. We come to receive our inheritance and declare it on the earth so that you, Jesus, are glorified. We want to honor you, Jesus. We want to bless you, lift you you up. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for the Word. Open our eyes to see. Open our ears to hear. And let us have revelation. Let this Word be alive and active in us, changing us, transforming us, Father. I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Stir up. 
There's a stirring up. Some of you just need a stirring up, say the Lord God. Some of you need us to stir up your spirit, man, and shake off the depression and discouragement because you've allowed the enemy to put on you what you're going through. Oh, glory to God. You know, certain seasons like winter are very gloomy and dark, and we get depressed and discouraged. And what's happened is we've got discouraged because of the hard season. And that we're going to discover today, God wants you to get a shout of praise and victory. And it's time to stir up your spirit, man. To stir up that shout. Ho! Oh, to get a boldness in your prayer life like never before. Because your breakthrough is in your heart. And if it will start to come out of your mouth with a boldness and an anointing of the Holy Spirit and power, your breakthrough is coming in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Well, let's go to Ephesians chapter 6. This is, our, of course, our foundational verse. Amen? And in verse 17, it says, and I want to just, I'm not going to do it all, but it says, and take, of course, we know the shield, but I want us to take this part, and take the sword of the Spirit which is the Word of God. So I want you to get a hold of it. We've got to take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. It's your only offensive weapon. It's your only weapon that allows you to advance and go forward. Many of us stay on defense, and God wants you to get out of defense and get into the offensive. We have stood so too long defending and many of you have been in a mode of defending yourself. And God wants you to get offensive with the promises of God in advance. Your breakthrough doesn't come by defending. Your breakthrough comes by advancing with the Word. So, let, oh, glory to God. Stay with me. Stay with me. Hebrews 4. Hebrews 4, verses 11 and 12. Amen, amen, amen. Therefore, let us be diligent. Oh, God. you get a diligence by stirring yourself up. There's an energy to this, and you're called to be diligent to enter the rest, to get out of the storm, to get out of the gloom and depression, discouragement, and get into His rest. Oh, glory to God, there's a rest for you today. Hallelujah. So that no one will fail through the following example of disobedience. For the Word of God listen very carefully, is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword and piercing as far as the division of the soul and the spirit of both joints and marrow and able to judge the thoughts and intents of the heart. It is alive and it is active and it is sharper than any two-edged sword. This word, oh God, I want you to lay hold of some stuff. We're just going to, I want to come back to this. We're just going to meditate on this. You're going to, we're going to come back to this because this is so important that we get this. But I really hear my spirit today with the spirit of God saying, are you ready? And as I was studying this, Lord, it says, are you ready? Ready for what? To leap. Leap. Yeah, leap into the promises because it says you got to take up the sword. And many of us just want it to fall into our lap. We don't want to do the work and we want somebody else, pray for me. We want somebody else to carry the weight. And God is saying, listen, this is about you. And God is trying to do something that's so much bigger than you, so much greater than you. And you can't imagine, we're looking for a simple breakthrough, but God is trying to do something bigger, greater. If we could just get our eyes open by the Holy Spirit to see. But you have to get into the Word. You're going to have to go and get those precious promises and get a revelation for yourself. And I'm trying to give you my notes because you cannot live off of mental assent. You may agree fully with what I'm saying, and some people don't. That's okay. You know, we serve a supernatural God. He's not restricted to the natural. Some people get offended. Listen, your God is a spirit Read the Word. He is a supernatural God. Every time He turns up, He works supernaturally. He's not restricted to the natural order. He can go in, you know, He's not restricted to time. Thank God. God is not restricted to time. The devil is. 
and you and I are, which is great because what you're going through, there is a time restriction on it. There's a day where it will end. It will expire. But God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He lives outside of time. And that's why, as he looks outside of time, he can see before, during, and after. He always knows. There's no surprises for him. He does not wake up, <laughs> which he doesn't sleep anyways, but you don't come to him and he's like, wow, you know, you would have had the breakthrough, but you did that and I, di I, I didn't plan for that. He always knows. See, he's fully aware, and we've got to lay hold of this, that God is not caught by surprise. And the enemy will always try to disqualify you. You know, you've, you just, you blew it. You went too far. You did this wrong. You did that wrong. And get you to the place where you quit, where you stop. Let's go to this. He, sorry, James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Consider it all joy my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its perfect result, so that you may be perfect, complete, lacking in nothing. Perfect, complete. You see, God's trying to bring you to a place, not just of your breakthrough, but to where you are complete, perfect, lacking in nothing, entire, where you've come to a place of maturity where you have see many of us take this thing and this is a wonderful promise and we share it with people you know you're going through a storm and we share that that word but we haven't lived it out and so there's not an authority there's not an anointing with it but there's something different when you stand and you've lived this thing out you've been tested with this you've been tried and you have lived walked this thing out and this word is in you because the testing of your faith is precious. It is powerful. It is producing something bigger. But, count it all joy. We are you, see, we are gloomy, depressed, and discouraged. Why? Because we're in it. And we've given greater authority to the problem than the word. And oh, glory to God that today, oh, kambatsikiriki, so kadashe, the word would come to such an authority in your life as you take it that it would break off of you that gloom and heaviness of the world so that you now count it all joy. Because guess what? You gain a far surpassing victory. You come to a place where you can boast of the word and of the promises and you have a joy because the word is settled and you know God cannot, God will not fail his word. You have a revelation of the word being absolute authority. And so you stand facing something with a confidence that the word is absolute. It is final. It has looked at every angle, every situation, and it is perfected. It has the right answer for what you are facing. There is nothing that the Word cannot answer. Cannot. And the Word will come. So now there's a joy comes out of the Word. There is a joy comes out of the confidence of this knowing this Word. Oh, let's go forward here. Romans 5. Verses 1 through 5, okay? Because I want you to see that Abraham could not come to the place where he was able to give and sacrifice Isaac or go to the place of being able to sacrifice Isaac until he'd been tested, tried, and proven. It was the Abraham that had gone through it that had come to such a confidence in the Lord that he was able to go knowing his God. See, you have a knowing, an absolute understanding and revelation of your God. And this testimony that you've now got, like Abraham had something, and so he was able to go, and he had a testimony and a knowledge and understanding that God had to meet with him. And he realized, the Lord is my provider. 
the Lord, in that place of need, the Lord will always meet it. Abraham got that. Why? Because he had lived it out. He had stood on the word and he refused to back down on the word. Romans 5, 1 through 5. Therefore, having been justified by faith. See, I want you to, because I realize that the enemy wants to disqualify you, get you always into working situation where you're trying to earn it. You're trying to earn your breakthrough through prayer, through this or that, and God wants you to come by faith. You are justified by faith. And thank God for the blood of Jesus. All those things, the religious people that have disqualified you said, you know what, you've gone too far, you've done this, it's just a little too little too late. Thank God I am justified by faith through the blood. I'm grateful for the blood of Jesus. I'm grateful that I can throw myself on the mercy and I can stand justified by faith. We have peace with God. I come to the place in God, I am nothing missing, nothing lacking, because I'm justified by faith. Now, I made a statement here, and some people didn't get it. The treasury of God, that abundance of His grace that is made available to us through Jesus. That every need is met, that you are nothing missing, nothing lacking. That He's given us all things pertaining to life and godliness. That's the treasury that you can come in. This word is that treasury. It has the promises in it to release in your life all the provisions that God has made for everything pertaining to life and godliness. And by the Holy Spirit, you can come to this great treasury in the word. And there's always something now that meets the need. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we've also obtained our introduction by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we shall exalt in the hope of glory of God. And not only this, but we also exalt in our tribulations, knowing that tribulations bring about perseverance. And perseverance, proven character. And proven character, character, hope, sorry. And hope does not dis disappoint because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit, whom he, whom was given us. That love poured in your heart is because God chose you. God loves you. God cherishes you. He treasures you. He is fully aware. You mean everything to Him. So listen, you got to understand, when you're going through it, He cares. He is fully aware what you're going through, and He absolutely loves you. He chooses you. He wants you, and that's why He poured His love. It was a demonstration, a confirmation that He chose you because we pour out our love on people that we choose, that we want, that we desire. You pour out, and so He poured out and poured in His love into you because how much He cherished you. So receive that. And when you get a hold of that, you get a hold of that hope doesn't disappoint. Why? Because I know He loves me. I know that He cares. I know that He's with me. I know that He has not forsaken me, and nor will He, because He loves me. And no matter where I go, thank God, His mercy is always more than enough to bring me back so that I can walk with Him. And He's always greater, bigger, and more. Oh, glory, glory, glory. It says in Romans 4.16, we discover that he is, Abraham is the father of the faithful. How? Because he lived it out. And that seed that was in him is now in you as a son. That seed of Abraham of being a father of the faithful. I want you to realize, you know, you look at the season that Abraham had to walk through, the hard season of trusting God for a son. The very thing that was dearest to his heart. And God knew it. And year after year after year after year, have you endured year after year after year after year after year? Trusting in a promise. Because he came to a place where he knew that God could not lie. And he would dare believe and stand and refuse to quit or give up until God did it. And so that's how he became the father of the faithful, the people that are full of faith, because he proved it. He walked it out. He did it. He did this word. And so we can look at his example of how God is faithful. 
if we'll just stand. Listen to this, Hebrews 4, 14 to 16. Because sometimes you come to this place where God, it's just too heavy. It's too hard. It's too overwhelming. God, I just, it's about to crush me. I cannot bear it. It is too difficult. God, you've got to come through or I'm going under. It's too much. And maybe you're there. I'm glad that he says, come to me, all who are heavy burdened. You got to come now. Oh, stay with me. Hold on, Batsika. Stay with, stay, stay. Hebrews 4, 14, 16. Therefore, since we have a high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in all things as we are, yet without sin. Therefore, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace, that we might receive mercy and grace in the time of need. Jesus, come on to me, ho, come by all who are heavy burdened, ro, come by, and I will give you rest, for my yoke is easy. God wants to, would you come? There's a place he wants you to realize that he was tempted in all ways, like you. He fully understands what you're going through. And he has provided an answer so that you can hold fast your confession. I wrote down certain things that I want you to get in this verse. Keywords. Hold fast your confession. Draw near. Confidence and receive. I mean, just say those again. Hold fast your confession. Draw near. Confidence and receive. So God wants you to get a hold of this, that you're to hold fast your confession. You have to have a confidence. You're going to have to draw near and you have to receive. You're breaking through. So here's the one that sympathizes in this difficult place and he understands what you're going through. And he's saying, look, here is how you can receive what you need in the hard place. Hold fast your confession, have such confidence, draw near and receive. Draw near that there's what? Mercy and grace. It's the throne of grace, so it's not by earning it. It's not, you cannot put up a defense based on if I pray longer, if I pray harder, if I do this, if I do that, if I fast, you cannot earn it. If I do pray, if I do fast, it's my pursuit of Him, not to qualify myself for the promise, because it's the throne of grace. And it's also, I can receive mercy and grace. So if there's something that I've blown it or missed it, I can receive the mercy first so that I can get the grace. God has got everything I need provided, and I can come by simply holding fast my confession. Come with such a confidence, which is an understanding of who I am in Him. See, when I come as a son and as a daughter, as an heir and a co-heir, and when I get that awareness that He is the Lord, my God, and I have this relationship with Him, it changes how I pray, how I approach the throne. And it changes how I hold fast the promises, because these promises now are for me. These promises I am qualified for through Jesus. And these promises are yes and amen in my life. And they are more than enough to meet the need and overcome the situation in my life. His promises. Amen? Now, I wanted to just hit this. The Word is alive and active. Alive. The Word is alive. And so when you get these, this Word in you, it will grow, it will increase, it will begin to move, it will begin to do, it's active, it does things. It will take the dead areas in your life and it will breathe on them because you, you know, being a scientist, there's certain definitions that go with the word living. And when I was, something that lives, breathes. 
And the Word of God breathes. And another word for breathe is inspire. We see that, of course, in um, the story of Adam being created. God inspired, breathed into him, inspired into Adam. And the Word breathes on every area in your life. So all the dead areas become alive. Do you see now that God wants to do something bigger in you? Greater to produce in you proven characters. You persevere, holding fast the word. We discover, of course, the word to the church of Philadelphia, which is the word to this church, is a word, the perseverance of my word. Holding fast the word. Because I trust the word, and when the word gets the place of absolute authority in your life, then everything regarding you, even how you think, how you feel, regarding your situations, your circumstances, symptoms, all must bow to the authority of the Word. But do you realize I've got to bow first? I've got to get a revelation of that authority first in order for it to work in my life. If somebody with an authority comes before you, they have no real authority until you receive it. Otherwise, they have to enforce it. Yeah. So if a police officer comes, I can either receive his authority and yield to it, or he has to enforce it. And I'm, the Word of God, you know, it comes and we need to receive its authority in our lives and bow to it. And then it has a force. We haven't even begun to understand the force of the Word. That it will cause the situation that are rebellious to the promise to bow. It will enforce itself. It will enforce itself inside of you. All the dead areas must come to life. New hope must arise. Faith must arise because the Word can't help it. It will do that and it develops an abundance on the inside of you. You begin to see things from the perspective of heaven. The Word grows and it grows so much that it comes to an abundance that now flows out of your mouth. You talk and act and think differently because of the Word. That's the place I want you to come to, where you spend time in the Word and stop spending time in the problem. So that the Word is now so alive, so rich in you, so big in you, that it now overwhelms you. And you see things because, you know, I'm standing for a job. I don't know what you're standing. If you're standing for a job, God doesn't want to just bring you a job. He wants to bless you with something greater, a career that enables him to bring about his purpose, to bless not just you, but his people. God always has something bigger in mind. God always, it was Abraham, you are the father, not just of a son, but many nations. It was always beyond what he could think, and it's going to be beyond what you can think. What you can imagine, God is something bigger in store, but it's going to take the word. See, you cannot make this happen. And so if you get this, we rejoice. We count it all joy in these hard places because it's in this hard place that the word begins to break forth. Certain seeds have to go through the cold winter to break it forward. Have you ever grown, tried growing a banana? You get the big banana seed, yeah, stick in the fridge. And there's other seeds you got to do certain things with. You got to chill them and do other things. And it's that hard season that breaks it, that begins the process to release it in your life. And God wants you to come to place. In Psalm 105, verse 19, it says this regarding Joseph, that the word that was given to him tested him until that word came to pass. So this very word that you received, this very promise, will test you. And what it's going to do is begin to expose areas in you that need to change, that are not bowing to the authority of the word. That's really what it's doing. When it tests you, it is coming along with that absolute authority because the word assumes absolute authority. And it expects that you will bow. And every area of you in your life that you refuse to bow it will challenge because that has to bow in order for the word to produce the fruit that you need. The peace, the joy, the kingdom of God in your life, the bigger breakthrough. And so that word is testing until the day and that time and the season where the word finally comes to pass. 
but I want you to get hold of something. That you have to hold fast the confession. And you're going to have to watch. Another word is profession. What is coming out of your mouth and defines the way you think and act. If you have hold of the word as an authority, how you think and act, how you profess, how you do, the very livelihood, your profession, your confession, now bows to the authority of the word and you hold fast that. And no matter what the season says, I hold fast this, the profession of my faith. It's what's coming out of my mouth, and I count it all joy because this profession, the Word, cannot, will not fail. God's Word is authority, and I know it. And I now have a confidence. And I love that word confidence because within that confidence, there's a boldness and a liberty to speak. I have a confidence and a boldness, a liberty. And there's a cheerful courage, a confidence that comes forth in that word. To come before the throne and know that as a son, and know that as I ask his word, his word is his will. And if I ask according to his will, he hears me. And if he hears me, I have the petition. And not only that, I have a high priest who sympathizes with me. And he will give me grace and strength. So in the midst of the storm, I can count it all joy. So in the midst of the storm, what starts to come out of your mouth is a shout of force, of victory. You know, one of the things I want you now to get, it's your offensive weapon, is the Word. And for too long, what happens is we've been on the defensive against the enemy. And it's time to take the offensive against the enemy, against your circumstances, and start declaring the Word. Start attacking with that promise. But it's got to be in you to the place that it, you have bowed to the authority of that word. That sword, you understand. You've developed the skill to use it. A sword in your hand is useless unless you have the skill and the, the, the power and the authority to use it. And so now, when I have such an authority through that time with the Spirit to use it effectively, there is a fear that comes on the enemy's camp, and this word now causes those situations, those circumstances to bow because I've already bowed. And this sword is saying, and enforcing it in my life, and enforcing it in my circumstances. It's time to tell the devil no. How many of you got hold of the promise of God and said, no, devil? Ho reke se kambaha. Ho kambatsiki. Some of you do also need a shout, said the Lord. A shout from your spirit man based on the word of final authority to tell the devil no. It's time to speak to your storm, the word. It's time to speak to the mountains, move the word. Your promises need to be so alive in you as final authority that you now speak it. And you'll know that it's final authority when there's a joy, when you count it all joy and you now get to the place where, God, I'm here to just rejoice in you. I'm here to boast in you. I'm here to glorify you. Because remember that our Father starts, hallowed be thy name. To hallow, to glorify, lift up, magnify, worship the name. So in every situation, what's coming out of me is the joy and the worship of his name. You can get to no greater place that in the midst of the storm, when the enemy is pressing in and everything's looking bad, and out of you is coming a joy and a worship and a praise of the living God. You're lifting up His name. You're glorifying His name. God, I just, I just rejoice in you. You are the Lord my God. You're the Lord my healer. You're the Lord my provider. You're the Almighty One. You're the faithful God. God, you were good and your mercies endure forever. You are more than enough. Ho reke sambaha. Ho you are a supernatural God. You're not restricted to what I can see. You're not restricted to what I can feel. He's got a thousand one ways to bring uh, up what you need. He's got more than enough resources to meet the need. God has a way. And all we have to do is come by simple faith and receive that He is the source. Then go after Him. The Word is your answer. Go into it. If you can get this, if I but touch the word, 
Do you remember the woman with the issue of blood? If I but touch the word, I hear the spirit. Ro kambaha si. Hey, hey, hey. Sho kanareke. If I but touch, ho, the word, saith the Lord God, if you will just touch the word. This is the authority. She touched the hem of his garment, the zitzi, the authority, the place of authority. I'd have to spend and do a lesson on that, but you're going to have to trust me. Oh, this is the authority. Because he upholds all things by the word of his power. This is the authority. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And there's nothing that came into being. This word. This word. There is nothing that will change in your life to bring about his will without this word. Your breakthrough won't come without this word. You gotta touch it. And when I mean I touch it like a woman that shoot blood, you gotta go after it until you get it and get a revelation and it's living and you get that unction. You've got it when the unction of life hits you. Get in the word. Begin to declare the word. Say, devil, I'm done with you. Get out of my life. Get out of my circumstances. I'm tired of lack because I, I am the head and not the tail. Go back to last week's message. I am the head and not the tail. I come above only and not beneath. Everything I put my hands to prospers. Go through it. What promise do you need? Get it and get it till it has an authority in your life and in your mouth and you begin to speak it and you've got a joy and you're just rejoicing, lifting up the God of your salvation. He is your light. In your salvation. He is more than, He's my living hope. I just lift you up, Jesus. I honor you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. I just praise the name of the Lord God. I honor you, Jesus. I dare to be a fool for your sake. I just worship you in this place. Oh, I give you joy. I give you, oh God, there's a joy in me. There's a worship in me. Glory to Jesus. Glory, glory. Oh, let the worship arise. Let my spirit man be stirred up. Let the promises be stirred up on the inside of me. Come forth in the name of Jesus. I speak life over my breakthrough. I speak life and I call things forth in the name of Jesus. I call forth that a job. I call it forth in the name of Jesus. I call forth that healing in the name of Jesus. I call forth that peace. I declare it so that Jesus cannot, will not fail his word. I decree his word in my life. I declare, Father, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in my life. In Jesus' name, you are my healer. You've given me all things pertaining to life and godliness. Father, I receive it. I receive it. Remember that word? Receive it. We receive it. We receive it, God. We receive it as an authority. We receive it as done. And as a consequence, we give him thanks. Amen. I pray that you're getting this. I pray that now there's a confidence in you. There's a change in you. And there's going to be such a change that the grumpiness, the complaining, the impact of all the pressure is off of you in Jesus' name. I break it off of you in Jesus' name. And I declare that you have peace in him. You have joy in him. Get into the word. This is your answer. This is your answer. Go after in the Word. Your Word, the Word is alive and active. Amen? It, God watches over His Word to perform it. His Word will not return to Him void. So why don't you just get a hold of the Word? Release the Word. Get before the throne room. Get this Word that He has for you and release it over your circumstances knowing that God will not, cannot fail that Word over your circumstances. I'm not saying wishful think. I'm saying get in the Word and let the Holy Spirit stir something in you, the promise. Let it change you. Let it have, it's a two-edged sword. Let it cut. Let it expose the areas in you, the wrong lust, the wrong thinking, all that junk and garbage so that it is removed and that we throw ourselves on the mercy and get washed by the blood. And we get changed in this process. So we come to a place of perseverance and proven character. Amen. And therefore we come to a proven hope. And now you've got a testimony that has an unction, that has a force to it, that you can speak into the lives of others. When somebody comes, they're going through it, and you can say, count it all joy. And you have a life to it, an authority to it, and it changes things. Amen? Well, I pray that you're blessed and encouraged, and I thank you for watching in Jesus' name. We're praying for you. Be praying for us. Thank you.